Good morning, everyone. So uh, I'm Nikhil, and thanks for the uh, great introduction. Uh, and I think we've had a few very insightful sessions, and somehow that feels like a very long preamble for us, because I think what we wanted to cover was essentially the AI ecosystem. We wanted to cover the power of generative AI, and we wanted to talk about the right data. And on top of that, where we wanted to get into the business implementation. So you have the right data, but how to use the data to solve the business case, that's an additional layer that we're going to add to this. And that's where we'll get started. So uh, I think what we have here are different uh, use cases to lay out the landscape for generative AI. Now, before we get into there, I think there's a bit of a prologue to this. That is the AI ecosystem. Now, our journey with generative AI didn't really start in November 22. It started much before that. And what we really, as an organization, realized that potential of analytics as a service. So you have different machine learning and AI components packaged as software as a service. So you can directly like, sort of interact with clients through an API. So we already put that framework in. And because of that, one of the biggest investments that went into it is setting up our AI platform. Now, the key component of this AI platform is an analytics or AI workbench. So this is where, which powers us and enables us to provide the compute to not just use different generative AI and LLM models, but also your traditional predictive analytics work that is done and create different modules, tools, solutions, accelerators, which can be directly plugged to solve multiple use cases. Along with that, I think we talked about another key aspect is responsible AI. So using this platform, what this helps us is providing that infrastructure. Uh, it helps us providing that uh, infrastructure essentially for our uh, data security, data privacy. Uh, it also helps us with the monitoring and governance. So all your human supervision and that framework really goes into play before any use case actually gets implemented. And with that, I think that is where like, we believe there's a head start where we already started prototyping on several use cases. So the way we look at these use cases, they really spread like they can help in enhancing employees' productivity. This is within your organization, but your employees can become more productive. A very simple use case of this is essentially your code assistance or how to get like, your more lineage about data. So there's a lot of migration which is really happening. So how to understand how that migration really needs to, done, needs to be done. So all of that really goes into that particular bucket. Another key uh, uh, like use case is an enterprise capability. So a lot of people are very good with data, but not everyone is as good and they may not like to work data. So there are assistants like conversational BI. So you get your data, but you are just conversing it in a very simplistic form. So that's a capability that can be built using this. And then uh, more like customer-facing solutions can also be built on top of it. You, like in your operations, you're working with thousands of documents. You want to extract information from out that. Pretty much unstructured. So that's where generative AI comes into play. And when you power it with your domain knowledge and your predictive analytics, the multiple use cases that you can uh, build on top of it. Now, what we're going to focus today is on a case study uh, on a customer experience uh, solution that we built. Now, this solution, it's not that, like, it's an old solution. It's not that we built it from scratch using LLMs. It was always there. But what we've done is mix that predictive analytics and generative AI, those capabilities, and now the solution is much more accurate. It's mo much more personalized. So there are various things that go into this. Uh, which is the building blocks of the solution. So these are normal, like in your servicing insights, it's needed in your back office. Uh, could be, say, your speech to text translation. That's a simplistic thing. Uh, so that's there. Those are the foundational blocks. And then there are different core modules, which really leads to insights. Now, these core modules are essentially, say, your topics, your intent, what, say, a particular inquiry or a complaint's about. It could also be information extraction. Now, there's a big narrative, and you really want to get to know what the customer is really talking about, whether there's an intent to cancel 
the subscription with your particular organization? Are they facing some kind of job loss? So maybe there's a potential to, uh, like potential to essentially default. So all of that information can be extracted, uh, which will lead to different kind of insights. And that's where the third module, which is essentially making the business impact. Now, you get different kind of uh, insights out of this, which can help you enhance your product. Or it could be marketing insights to be, keep your customers more engaged, cross-sell more. Or it could be just uh, into more of your risk insights, which can be, there's say, a potential uh, loss that you might be facing from a particular customer. So all of this, now where does generative AI come into this? If we talk about intelligent IVR, so which is making things easier, like it was there before, but now it's more generative, it's much more personalized. Similarly, if we talk about information and entity extraction, now you're literally talking about thousands of different kind of unstructured documents. When you build a solution here, you go with limited metadata, but with generative AI, you can do much more. You're trained on billions of parameters. So that's where those are the enhancements which can be made on the solution. And another key aspect is in terms of insights, bringing that personalization thing. So you're more direct and more relevant for the customer. That's where generative AI really helps to add or like bring those synergies on top of your conventional AI as what we say today. So moving on now, I think using this, we'll talk about a use case where we've actually implemented this for one of our clients. And I'll hand over to Soumya to take it. Thanks, Nikhil. So, uh, Nikhil, you clearly, uh, very rightly covered that the customer experience is the key here. And we are not using the artificial intelligence. Rather, I would like to say we are augmenting the intelligence. And that's where we implemented this use case in one of our insurance inquiry center, which gave us three major benefits. One, the 3x time customer, 3x time faster customer resolution, 18% or 85% reduction in the manual collation of the data by the agents, and 25% agents claim to action. So before I deep down, uh, deep dive into the actual technical uh, details, would like to focus more upon the, uh, the, the, the objective, why we picked up the inquiry center. So with the in introduction of the generative AI, most of the organization wanted to do some experimentation. And the large language models are not new. They have been used by the organization lot of lot many occasions so classification models the predictive uh, the sentiment analysis have already been seen the usage of the large language models so our clients requested or we collaborated with our clients in terms of putting up some experiments around the generative air now the main reason to pick up this particular pro, uh, this particular use case was when, whenever we think about the customer experience it's always uh, drives down from the better experience for the claim handlers so if we make the claim handlers experience better, we can definitely make sure that the customer experience is improving. And also, with this experimentation, there is a very low chances or the low error cost. That's also we also kept in mind while experimenting. So uh, when we started, we started with multiple large language models and commercial, non-commercial, started with Alpaca, moved on to Plan T5, and etc. But finally, we have to think about multiple aspects while working on these solution is on the data privacy, how we are going to fine tune our data, how we are going to transfer, migrate our data, whether we want to have an in-house capability, whether we want to have an on-cloud capability, or do we want to go ahead with a hybrid? So the key with the large language model is to have a very smart and a very focused engineering component, because it can become really costly. Implementing on ground, these solutions can become costly. So what we opted for was a hybrid solution, where we looked into the, we trained the data, some of the data, and with this uh, recent introduction of the LoRa's or the uh, parameter efficient fine tuning, the fine tuning cost has really reduced. So we fine tune our data on on-premises uh, on premises centers, and then finally expose it to our customers on a cloud plat platform. Talking more about the solution, so this is a claim agents assist that we develop where in an actual scenario or the inquiry centers, the agent gets multiple call from the customers, requesting for the multiple services, concerns, complaints, etc. So what we actually uh, uh, did here, that instead of collating this information in a current scenario, that agent have to look into multiple platforms, gather that information, and then service the customer. Rather than doing that, we are giving a, 
a solution on one page where they can deep dive into the, uh, into the claim at any level, at any given point, and can assist our customers quickly and efficiently. How? They can simply enter the claim number and get the, the, get the extractive details about the claim metadata. And then we have the abstractive information which is facilitated by the large language models. And as we saw the use case of creating the summaries, we are picking up the summaries, assisting the agents and telling them that what has been done on the claim, what were the next steps, and what can be done. Or also providing with an additional insights around what are the complaints, whether there was a complaint or a concern earlier, are there any financial vulnerabilities, and also some of the specific use case, for example, anyone working in the bodily injury claims. Uh, they can easily look out, like this model can actually help us in understanding if there is an opioid uses or not. And if so, then there is a red flag. So bringing the solution as a co-pilot for the agents, helping them in better resolution, quicker resolution, and assisting them or augmenting their intelligence with its smarter decision making, giving the information, is what we had tried to solve here. Now the third component, which is the component where we are using the generative AI, is looking beyond what you see on the application. So if suppose the agent, is, agent has the information at hand, and they would like to know more what has already been done, or they want to deep dive into the documents, or they want to extract the information of all the documents that has been given to the customer. Or apart from that, if they want to understand what has happened on this claim previously, apart from what we have already given as a summarization, or they want to dig down deeper, they can simply ask the claims GPT. They can ask the question, for example, what was the exposure amount, which may not be present in the current summary, but can be easily retrieved using the claims GPT. And that's where we have put this together, which can assist the agent in a smaller decision and in the right time and the right claim and the right uh, speed with it or efficiency. What we are adding here is around uh, the, the, the call transcript summary, which is, which is also giving uh, the information around whether there was a sentiment, uh, a concern raised by the customer or whether there was a concern raised by the, uh, was my agent empathetic or not. So any other details that we want to extract, which cannot be done by uh, reading, the, reading the notes or which can take a lot of time in terms of reading the transcripts or the notes or the case notes, can be easily put together on this solution. And that's what we have assisted with our agents in the inquiry center. And that's where we are seeing the significant improvement or the benefits. I think so just to summarize, I think what we have is an AI ecosystem. We've made synergies between predictive analytics, your conventional AI and generative AI. And on top of that, there's human supervision, there's responsible AI, that framework is built. And now there's, uh, there's data available. What we're doing is how to use that data to really implement use cases and start delivering value. So that's what the intent is. Thank you.